Hey folks, welcome to a special edition of the Foosh Podcast. We are on the floor of the New York Toy Fair and we're here with Eric Cornboy Mays and Eric Treadaway from the Four Horsemen Studios. Uh, I'm here with Nick, as usual. Good morning. And uh, we're going to talk Mythic Legions. This is the Kickstarter that's currently running for the Four Horsemen for their fantasy uh, six-inch scale line. Um, and we are going to hear all about it right now. Nick? Yeah, so um, we talked yesterday and you guys were... Just over 50% of the way there. Where, where, where are we at right now as far as the actual funding goes? It's still just, well, we uh, originally uh, were shooting for a goal of $140,000. And in the first, I think, 33, 36 hours, something like that, we hit 50%. And we're, you know, we're getting close to 60% right now. Mm-hmm. So it's slowed down a little bit, as Kickstarters do. But it's still moving along. And we're getting ready to add a few add-ons that I think people have been expecting or hoping for. And uh, hopefully that'll bump it up a little bit, and we'll hit that goal. Fingers crossed. I, th- I think we might have actually even crossed sixty. All right. So we're <laughs> all right. All right. Check right uh, now. <laughs> CV's getting out the phone. All and right. you want it for for people that um, haven't uh, caught on yet uh, to this line. You want to give just a general overview of what it is and how there it might how be works. two or three people out there that, that visit the boards that may not know yet. <laughs> sure. Uh, well, Mythic Legions. It's. Uh, as we've recently announced, a six-inch scale uh, fantasy line. Uh, our, a lot of what our concept is with this is that it's a very open world so that, uh, you know, collectors can come in. If they're a dwarf fan, they can get dwarves. If they're knight fans, they can get knights um, without really any, like, uh, you know, preconceived baggage that goes along with it. Um, there's been a lot of fantasy lines out there over the years that are attached to various, uh, you know, movie or animated properties uh, or books. Uh, you know, Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones is out now, World of Warcraft, things like that. Um, but you've already, you know, you've kind of got to be into it already uh, to know what the characters are and things like that. Although we're working on a story on this, uh, it's still, we're trying to hit the archetypes of what these types of fantasy characters are and so that there's almost a nostalgic feeling to these characters even though they're brand new takes on them right um and so the line uh, you know is, is also a big part of what we want to do with this line is they have the diversity of what these worlds can offer um you know right now we're starting off this is what we're calling our phase one and uh, this is based off of a standard uh, six and a half inch male body type, uh, you know, and that all comes down to, to tooling issues. What can you have shared tooling, shared articulation points, and things like that. So in this first uh, first line so far, what we're showing, we've got humans, we've got dwarves, we've got skeletons, we've got orcs, uh, we have a vampire. Uh, you know, in the humans, we have both knights and, uh, you know, some more, like, barbarian-type characters. And uh, in the stretch goals, which haven't been shown yet, there's uh, at least three other races that haven't been shown yet. Um, so we really have been able, with this one kind of basic body type, and been able to, to stretch it out to really get a good jump start on what we can do with with the line as far as, uh, you know, just covering as much ground as possible. Right. And there's a... Hey, there's wait a, a minute, wait a minute. As far as funding, sorry to interrupt, but <laughs> we are actually officially at 61%. All right. <laughs> nice. All right. And how, they're still like, what, 25? Yeah, this was, it's one week at 9, 9 p.m. tonight, it'll be one week. All right. We have, so we've got sorry. eight weeks left. Good, good, good. Um, and there's like, there's a modular nation, a nature to these uh, figures too, right? So in terms of part swapping and things like that, so if you have, you know, skeletons and you have dwarves, you can mix armor pieces and heads and things, yeah? Right. It's Originally, we were thinking possibly a little bit more modular. Uh, you know, quite frankly, the a lot of the response is why. Um, you know, people were saying, well, if one character has, I don't know, black armor on and the other one has gold armor, why do I want to put gold arms on black armor? Mm-hmm. Um, and then when we made this, the jump up to six inch, then it even made less sense to yeah. go that modular. Uh, but they still are very customizable. Um, as far as the armor goes, the uh, the loin armor, like the front cloth piece, uh, is interchangeable. The skirt itself is interchangeable. You can actually, if you wanted to, for some reason, swap the figures at the waist because you do pop the waist uh, to remove the skirt. Um, 
the shoulder pads are all interchangeable. The collars are interchangeable. Uh, the heads are interchangeable. The weapons are interchangeable, and all of the head ornamentation yeah. is interchangeable. So, uh, for example, Gorgo, the, the uh, uh, black knight figure of Evil Knight, that one helmet. He right now he, he has the uh, the deer antlers on, but you could switch that out for eagle wings, bat wings, uh, the smaller kind of more ram horns, or mm -hmm. the the large bull horns. Yeah. So. You know, just that head alone, you start right. getting these combinations together. Right. And then, you know, the, uh, the Gideon up there, that head has three plugs on it. So between the, the different ones you can put on the side, then on the top, you can put, there's a, an eagle standard, there's a, um, a demon or a dragon standard, there's a feather plume, and uh, there's also a spike that can go on the top. So, I mean, that guy's, then yeah. that guy's head, I mean, you, you can just yeah. mix and match like crazy on one yeah. single. Plus, his, his visor you can display up or down. Right. Yeah, we got a picture of that yesterday. Yeah, you're the only people who've gotten a picture. Oh, good. <laughs> and I held it for him and they actually got cool. pictures. I don't think anybody else had pictures of that <laughs> visor down yet. Yeah. So, the, you guys have some, I guess what maybe you would call central or main, like named characters um, offered, but you're really taking the idea of legions quite literally because this Kickstarter actually has, I guess it's an add-on where you can add like six packs of the um, army builders um, as well. What was, what, what was that just, did that idea come just from the legions idea alone or was that like a, a, a an add-on execution that you guys kind of knew you always wanted to take part in? Well, that's something that we wanted to do from the beginning is to make this so people can actually build armies with these things. Um, the whole, uh, you mentioned the six pack, those are actually available as an initial pledge if you'd like, and then right. you can do add ons with other things. But we also actually have not, a not to say the, fig, the, the army builds themselves. We, oh, no, we, they're, they, they're available as singles. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And then you can add six packs on uh, for add ons. But um, if, we, if the stretch goals get reached for the, the uh, barbarian and for the uh, orcs, we're going to create orc um, six pack oh, army builders nice. and barbarian army builders as well. So. You'll be able to have literally legions. Yeah. So speaking of the the army builders, their price point is actually lower than I guess the the main characters, right? Um, I, I know some people have kind of been wondering what what is it that differentiates them to, to make the cost different. It's all paint. All paint. Yeah, it's okay. literally just paint applications. There's they're very very basic as far as their paint applications mm -hmm. go, with possibly only two or three paint applications on the very basic ones. And the, the more elaborate ones might have 20 to 30, maybe even more yeah. applications on just one one side. Right. So. Yeah, we, I mean, we were able to come in and cut the the base price on the Legion Builders in half yeah. based on paint. I mean, that's how expensive wow. paint is. Wow. Um, and uh, it, one thing that we've seen so a couple of people mention, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and address it now, on um, the uh, Tibius figure back there in the corner, that's uh -huh. the kind of skeleton general character. Yeah. Um, that guy's going to get more paint. Because um, okay. a lot of folks are saying that the uh, what we're calling the standard or the basic army builder skeleton looks like he's got just as much paint as that guy, which he, he doesn't. But it does, I, you know, we agree, it does kind of appear that way. So we're going to go back in before the end of the Kickstarter and do an update and give him a bit more of an ornate uh, paint sure. scheme so well, you know that he's... He's a step above your army builder, like standard guys. And that's the thing about uh, showing this stuff at Toy Fair or any of these shows and getting these images out there to fans. I mean, if they have suggestions like that, at this point we can address them and make sure yeah. they're taken care of before production starts on these things. I think you mentioned to me yesterday that um, Otho, the character, his, uh, his head came in from the factory a little bit, like he's 8% too large. I no, think it said, came, unfortunately, <laughs> it came out of my hands, 8% uh -oh. too large. I, I'm not going to pass the buck. Uh -oh. you, you know what it was is, is um, you know, when you're sculpting these things, you know, you're sculpting them in clay, so they're unpainted. Right. Uh, you know, the, the prototypes are in parts and things like that. And, uh, you know, a lot of times sculpting is, a, is an additive process, depending on how the sculptor works. And for sure. me, it, it is. Um and so, it, it, you know, the whole time it looked looked fine. Right. And then as soon as it got painted up, right. everybody's just noticing, 
it heads a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but that, but the point is, you guys are addressing it. It's, a, yes. it's early. It, enough it's at already this point. been addressed. Yeah, it, it's yeah. the because I mean so. these have to be resized anyway. So we right. went in. We did uh, about eight or nine Photoshop. Uh, like test it at like 0.5 percentages and, and we to, you know discussed it and debated it and we came uh, came down came up with that it needs to come down an additional eight percent so it will be at, at 92 percent of where it currently is and when, it, when we actually do that and get it back we will show side by side comparisons eight percent doesn't sound like a lot but, but when you're dealing with things on this scale, it really does make a difference. Yeah, yeah we thought it, we even thought before <laughs> before we did that that it was more borderline than it was, and then no, yeah. he's, he's he's a melon head, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> melon. <head. laughs> um, so for for people that um, haven't ventured into Kickstarter or it's a little unfamiliar territory, can um, I just want to make clear that like if assuming this you know funds and it goes forward, it's not it's not that. Um, then it, you know, then they'd be able to. So if if people are maybe interested in this line, it's not like they can sit back and wait and see if it funds, and then they'd be able to go buy it from your site. They've no. got to be in on. They've got to pledge to be able yes. to get into. Uh, the hundred and forty thousand dollar price point that we're going for for the uh, funding on this thing means that if that doesn't happen, if we do not reach that goal, these will not get produced because right. as a small company, we cannot afford production costs. Right. These figures. Now, if we do reach that $140,000 goal, then we can produce these figures and get them out in the fan, uh, the hands of fans who pledged on Kickstarter. But if we don't surpass that, there's a chance that they may never hit store horses. Right, Because right. We'll, we'll only have made enough to produce these figures, for the, have for them the pledges, shipped, yeah. and get them out to the people who pledged. So, so, if, you're, so if, you, if you're out there and you've been you know, eyeing this stuff and, and it appeals to you, but you're thinking, oh, well, I'll wait and see if it funds, and then I'll just buy it for don't don't do that. You, if you're interested, you got to pledge. It causes a lot of heartburn for everybody who waits to that last minute to uh, make that pledge <laughs> anyway. Because poli- <laughs> the, the lack of sleep that I've been getting the past few nights. But please, please back so I can go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I mean, also, I, cause, I mean, we understand too. But like, uh, it, it's you know, especially with all these figures, it, there's a lot of potential money to that to be spent here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know everybody's got a budget and everybody's got bills and you know got to got to put gas in their car and all that. So I mean we we definitely understand that. Um, and you know I, I think but, but you know realize too like if you're even mildly interested in these and you think well but, you know I, I want these but I need to wait six months I, I can't get all of these. You know, even if you come in and get one it still helps you know right. to meet that goal to make right. sure that they get made so we you know you can come back later on to buy them right right and i was going to say you know there's like there's so many different levels like you can spend you know what is it upwards of $500 and get like the entire set of the principal guys or whatever but you can also get a really sweet knight or skeleton warrior for 30 bucks which is probably what that figure would be at retail at Toys R Us if it was, or you know, even right. just a cool Mythic Legions art book for yeah. sixteen bucks. Right, you right. Come in and get that if you can't, you know, if you can't swing yeah. the thirty bucks for the figures yet. So there's definitely a price point for everybody to get in on it. Well, and, and I think too, surpassing the the funding goal helps with maybe being able to do wider production on these. But you guys have made it very clear from the very beginning that this is just the first iteration of what you guys have in your minds for what this line could ultimately become so further stretch goals or like second phase types of things are those things they're obviously helped or supplemented by you know the, the funding going above and beyond absolutely the, the well that's is. that's why I mean people have asked why aren't the the barbarian and the orcs in this initial why are they stretch goals why are they not they not initially available well the reason for that is is those three characters are going to require a lot of new tooling to produce those. You know, we started creating these based on a knight's body, mm-hmm. and there, we threw some new uh, parts in there as we're building onto this and, and new heads and everything, but those guys are re- going to require a lot of new tooling, so they become stretch goals. That way, we can meet those stretch goals, and we can make those tools to create those parts, which will eventually help to build the rest of this line, too, because those... those um, bare arms and bare chest of, of these characters, bare legs and stuff, can mix and match in with right. the night bodies too and create other new characters. Right. 
So th this is actually your guys' uh, second foray into um, Kickstarter. You know, the first one was obviously the, the hugely successful Gothatropolis Ravens uh, campaign. Um, what What's different for you guys about this go-around on Kickstarter? Or what, what, what did you take from your first experience that makes this a different experience now? First and foremost, we learned a lot mm -hmm. from doing that first Kickstarter and from using the, the program that we use to integrate the Kickstarter into our shipping schedule. That was our biggest hurdle to get over. And uh, So this next time, we have all the tooling ready. It's actually already over there. It's all been pantographed down. It's all ready to go, except for a few minor pieces here and there. We didn't have that ready to go with the uh, the Gothatropolis Ravens. Um, yeah, I mean that was that was the six month delay last time. Right. It was just the resizing right. figures and because switching factories. Because we went with three we went through three different factories before we found a factory that was um, adequate enough to pantograph these down and keep all the detail that we had. And the factory that we're using. Did an amazing job, spectacular and, job. And the paint too had to be a huge thing. The paint. Well, you design. know what? We were worried to death that we were going to have a hard time finding somebody who would match the paint details that we wanted. And it wasn't that hard. We tried two different factories, found one that was perfect, and we went with that. But those delays, with that, those initial delays with the uh, the panographing killed us. And you know that was only a few months delays. And then as we went along, I mean, we we tried to be as parent transparent as possible with fans and let them know along the way the little hiccups that we're running into during right. production. But along the way, one more little tiny hiccup backs things up two weeks, and then another one backs things up. So it was all little tiny hiccups, but they added up to this thing not getting out into the hands of fans uh, for nearly two years from the initial launch of the Kickstarter. So that's one thing we're definitely not going to have as many issues with, hopefully, because of everything we've learned from the right. previous one. I, I think the other big, big thing uh, that... It's it's kind of uh, it worked out well that that the way this is timed out. Um, we're well aware of all the issues with shipping, and particularly to international customers. It's challenging. It's I mean, you know, it's it's just frankly, it's been way way more than we ever expected with with the distribution of the product. I mean, we and if we we've run a store for years, but you know, we get orders. You know, they, they come in, you know, uh, there's a rhythm to it, and we right, can yeah. deal with it. And we knew we were getting into a, a big challenge here, but it just, I mean, we've hit so many bumps with the, with this part of it. But the timing has worked out well, because we actually set up this Kickstarter, and we set up the levels, and we were working on this while we were learning these shipping issues. And so we were able, able to set up so many things where that's going to go smoother when it comes time for, for fulfillment, uh, we uh, we actually had a, a a shipping representative in our our shop for almost two full days uh, about a week or two ago, find, fig, finding out completely different ways that we can ship and in particular oh, wow. streamline the international orders. Um, it's I mean the, the you know the international pro process it's just. The, you know, we've come into you know so many issues with the the customs. customs yeah. um, just, just it seems like everything that could happen <laughs> has yeah. happened. Yep. Um, but you know, including phantom snowstorms. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. The flu yeah. running rampant through the studio. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it just yeah. Uh, any anything and everything. Um, so, but. You know, so so now we're you know hopefully we're projecting if the you know if this goes through that it's a year for delivery mm -hmm. hopefully sooner but that's what we put just to, to right. make sure worst case scenario you know so so this is we got a year now to work out the kinks and then sure. you know get this stuff out the right way next time um, so that yeah I mean th those are those are like I think our two biggest things that we've yeah. taken away from. Well, good. So, I, I mean, I wait, guess... Wait, wait. Before we get any farther, uh -huh. we want to publicly apologize to all of the Kickstarter backers and all the store enforcement customers who have, or who have been waiting for a long time for these Ravens and are still waiting. They are coming. If you don't have them now, they are on their way. We're not trying to screw anybody over. We want these toys to get into the hands of collectors. I mean, it's what we 
do this for. Yeah. We want everybody to have these. We want everybody to, to enjoy these as much as we enjoy making them. So we apologize for the delays, but we swear to you, we will make every issue right. Awesome. So, so then I guess to, to finish up, what, you know, I guess you'll have to talk in general. I mean, this gets funded and we move forward with the first iteration. I mean, what's the limits of your guys' imaginations as far as where this can go when it comes to the, what, what it can grow into from the characters, the creatures, all of that? I mean, well, you know, we're, <laughs> we're, we've started talking, I mean, we've been talking about this amongst ourselves and we've, we've kind of been, you know, talking about this a little bit on the forums and stuff. Um, this is what, like what we're calling Phase One Mythic Legions, um, and, it, and it's the phases are, are kind of are, are uh, based on uh, you know tooling parameters. So you know I, the, one of the big questions is why are there no females in here so far? That's why because it, we can't you know it would be a completely different set of tools and in, in uh, characters. And this Kickstarter is already huge enough as it is. Right. So phase two is going to be the the female uh, entry into the line. The female characters are well integrated into the mythos of the line. Mm -hmm. um, they're you know the leaders of the factions, the key players are just as important as the ones you see here. I mean, if you you know, what well, if you read the the little bio pages that we have up on our site. You know, the, the characters here only represent a portion of, of like the heads of the factions. So you can kind of see where some of the blanks are. Um, and so the, the basis of the phase two is going to be females. That's going to provide us with uh, smaller body parts, smaller joints, smaller weapons. Mm -hmm. um, so then that opens up the door for elves. It opens up the doors for uh, goblins, for, for fairies, for gnomes. Uh, you know, it, it's... It, the way we got skeletons and dwarves and orcs out of this, we're going to be able to get all you know all of those types of races. Plus, we're going to be able to get female orcs, female skeletons, wow. <laughs> uh, female vampires. It's it's all on the table. That's a good one. And then, I, and then it kind of like in between phases or outside of the the large tooling phases, we're also looking at things like uh, like large, maybe like twelve inch or so tall troll figures Ooh. or. Uh, <laughs> You know, a nine-inch scale of, uh, you know, more like ogre-type figures. Or a big 36-inch scale <laughs> dragon. <laughs> yeah, we're not. I'll don't take laugh. It. We want I'll it. We it. want to do it. And, I mean, we're it. actively, you know, have talked about ways to actually get a playset out there. Wow. Which is, there are things like that. You know, when it was four inch, that's what we. That was one of the reasons we really thought four inch originally is because yeah. we wanted this expansive world. And then when the more we started thinking about six inch and the reasons that it made sense for us, um, decided well, who cares? <laughs> we could do it at six inch. We could find creative ways to do it. Um, you know, the, if, if we could do a big troll, it'll be a roto vinyl troll. Mm -hmm. We can do it for a, an affordable price for a giant toy yeah. and make it a perfect fit for the rest of the line. You know, it'll be it'll be a cool thing. Um, we want to do, uh, you know, we we want to make sure that we get, uh, you know, horses and other types of mounts into the line. And that, uh, in that was designed into the figures from the beginning to make sure that they're able to ride, uh, diff, you know, different horses and that their their armor works so that they can get into the poses to fit on on a saddle. Uh, so I mean, the sky really is the limit on these these things. Okay. Uh, yeah, that that's one of the reasons that we that we're going with cloth capes. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people want to see plastic. I get it. I'm actually, you know, in many cases a fan of plastic capes. But this line, we're looking for something that that plays more like a classic toy. If we can right. get these, you know, I, I guess you can call them vehicles. I don't know things like catapults <laughs> and stuff like mounts, that. It's definitely yeah, weapons steeds. of war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or or you know. To be able to sit in the throne in a castle. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, uh, right. I mean, the capes themselves, I mean, it has to be good quality. We're not going to just throw any crappy cloth cape on there. If, it, if we can't get something that sources out with the right quality, then I guess our next alternative would be go, to go with a plastic cape that's removable. But 
but you guys kind of went through you went you went through that and had good success with Gallus yes. as far yeah, as yeah that's why we're that's goes. why we're very confident we can find the right kind of cave to, to work well yeah, with right. these figures and look good at that scale yeah, and, and you're talking of you are talking about capes and or pieces that would hinder things like sitting in a throne or right. you're not necessarily like you know the, I'm looking at you know Gideon's tunic that's sculpted plastic right. because yep. it doesn't need to be a soft good so and yeah. it's and that's a removable piece so okay. one of the one of the things designed in is that the you know the front uh, loin armor is is interchangeable so mm-hmm. a guy like that that would be very hard to put on a horse but when the horse comes around that piece can can come out but what we might do is with a horse is provide an alternate piece of absolutely a piece of loin armor for just for horse riding uh, or it might be where you you actually pull it off and the the uh, you know the saddle hides the area yeah, where you pull right. it off um it, it's you know it's something we we want to make sure works uh you know it's it's been planned from the beginning we will cool. So, yeah, I, I guess my only thing now is that I, I can't decide if I'm going to order two six-packs or three six-packs of uh, the, the skeletons. But, well, we're surprised. Um, like, the, the the surprise standout favorite seems to be the dwarves, and we weren't really expecting them. Funny. Expecting yeah, you know, I, I think a lot of that is, is that we haven't really had dwarves in this scale. I mean, well, Gim- maybe Gimli, we announce it now. Gimli from, from Lord of the Rings. No? Surprise coming? No, we need to, to make sure. <laughs> yeah. we, 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 dwarves are big I mean they were big in The Hobbit we didn't really get any uh, actual dwarf uh, figures then and um, I guess the Toy Biz Lord of the Rings line was the last one that I can remember that any kind of dwarf was released yeah. especially in this yeah. scale so I mean they're kind of a long time coming yeah I mean uh, yeah the lack of product for the Hobbit movies really left a, a hold for the, those types of characters um yeah, so I, I think you know maybe people are just ready to, to get you know get more of those types of characters. Yeah. So the one last thing that I want to touch on, you guys are doing the fan choice vote. Um, yes, fantastic the exclusive. fantastic exclusive one. Yeah. Sorry. Um, it's, on, <laughs> it's on the sourcehorseman.com uh, message board. So so what, what what are the pieces that are kind of coming together so far? Um, you know what, what, what seems to be leading the pack. It looks like the one that's leading the pack because we've had some fans that have gone in and. Like taking the parts that are like in the lead right now uh-huh. and Photoshop them together because we actually have two um, D representation of all the various parts that are available, and they put them together and kind of built the character what he looks like so far. Yeah. If if this goes through the way it's looking now, and it looks like it's going to be the head from uh, both our uh, this little dwarf right here on like a normal human body, but obviously it'll be painted differently. Right. right. Uh, one of on one of the normal night bodies, and it surprisingly looks it amazing looks cool, yeah. on that body. Yeah, kind of the grizzled, Sweet. bearded knight. Yeah, it looks like a bearded yeah, we, knight barbarian kind of combination. Yeah. And then the head actually at one point was adjusted because sure. the way that the the dwarf neck uh, sits, it, it it rests a little differently on the torso. And so we actually before that, when the tooling went over, we adjusted that head so it would work that way because. You know, it's not an option in voting now, but that head looks great on the barbarian body too. Yeah, like, oh, he looks sure. like a, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. a big brawler, Viking oh, yeah, type guy. Right. Yeah, definitely. You know, one thing I do want to, to add into this because uh, CB did touch on it before, and it's something that has, I, you know, I think flown completely under the radar on this thing. And uh, you know, we partially because of because of us, but it, um, we didn't get the details worked out until so close to the, the Kickstarter we weren't able to really uh, you know promote it as heavily uh, as we would have liked is the art book yeah um, right. because uh, that's actually a huge deal for us mm-hmm. um, because you know we've been putting together the, these homegrown uh, properties and figures for years and one of the biggest requests that we've gotten is in all that time we've never been able to get our act together and get some sort of a uh, you know, content out there to people. I mean, this we've already done better than we ever have because we got the bios on the site. We're already proud that we were able to pull yeah. out. <laughs> um, but this this art book is is you know the beginning of the answer to that because we wanted to do this line and come out and do it right from the beginning and then provide that. And so this art book, it's going to have a 22 page comic book in it. Uh, we're in talks right now with with the writers and artists uh, during the campaign, we hope to make the announcements on that. Um, 
really uh, some big, solid names uh, working on this. I mean, we've we've been very fortunate with uh, the interest that we've had in this from a comic standpoint. So, you know, you're going to have a, a very cool comic book in this thing, which is, I mean, it, we couldn't be happier about. Um, there's going to be the basis for a gaming element for the line, which is also something we've been very interested in including from the beginning of this. And it's going to be a way where you can actually include the figures themselves in the game. Um, it's going to be a you know, pretty simple setup, where, at least for you know, your, your base game, something that will be expandable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but all of that's going to be included in the book, like the rules for that and how to get a game going. Oh, okay. uh, cool. And then also there's going to be uh, you know, sneak previews of upcoming figures. Uh, there's going to be behind the scenes of when these things were in progress and design drawings, stuff like that that's never been shown before. Uh, the, the entire book's going to be 48 pages. It's going to be a, like a you know a, a square bound book, prestige format. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's really going to be something special. And we're in, we're also including uh, a set of trading cards that, with it that have uh, you know bio and stats um, and uh, some sort of a, a mini print which will include some uh, you know some art from the book. And so it's really a deluxe little package yeah. and. Uh, I, I actually don't even remember what the price is on there, but it's a it's a reasonable price. I think right. it's like sixteen dollars. Wow, oh, yeah, yeah that's sixteen. Very reasonable, definitely. And uh, it's and that's included with uh, the all in package. So if you're getting that, you really are going all in. You're getting you know you're getting some content and you're getting the figures, but it's available as an add on. Uh, so you know it's it's something like I said. I feel like it's flying under the radar a little bit, but it it is something that really we feel like brings this line to the next level because yeah. you know you're going to buy you know invest in these figures and then now you actually know what these guys are and right. you know yeah. why they why they're cool and you know what their motivations are and sure. uh, you know all that kind of good stuff which like i said i mean our our fans have been asking for it for years so i'm thrilled that we can finally pull it off absolutely absolutely so a week down about 3 weeks to go yep um we want Eric to be able to sleep at night, so, um, and I want to be able to sleep knowing that I'm going to get all of these uh, these guys that I want as well. So back yeah. it, get out there. This is very exciting. Let's I love make the those stretch goals. Yeah. yeah, I love the Gothropolis um, stuff, but this is the stuff that really speaks to me. So I, I am really, really excited. So congratulations! Yeah, actually, we got fifty-four thousand dollars to go. That's all right. Let's do it. Fifty-four thousand dollars to back nice. this thing. We need an angel out there. There. We need somebody with a lot of cash. Okay, just <laughs> fifty four yeah, grand just, on it, and we're good. Just get your face really rich. Back. Yeah, you get your face sculpted on one, right? Oh yeah, down ten thousand. Yeah, ten thousand. Yeah, 10, 10, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sculpt. You can come and sit in the studio, and we'll have you sit there and model for us, and sculpt your head, and put it right on your own personal Mythic Legions figure. Sweet. Right. We'll um. We'll have the links uh, uh, when we up, when we when this We've goes got up. We've all over the site. Yeah, but we'll, we'll have them. It'll, on it'll the... be on with this article, but it also go, just hit up uh, sourcehorseman.com. Dot com. Yeah. And uh, uh, Kickstarter. Search for Mythic Legions, uh, and you will find all the info. And yeah. Store Horseman, our retail. Outlet. And Store Horseman. Yes. All right. Well, I know you guys have been chatting with us for a long yeah, time. Yeah. Let you back to selling your selling your stuff. Yeah. So uh, thank you guys very much, but. I don't want to talk specifically, but you guys do kind of handle another very high-profile <laughs> property in Masters of the Universe. We had some great reveals yesterday, um, Mara and Pika Blue for the standard line, and then the 2000X mini-sub. But I, I, I think, one, if I can just ask you guys one question about it, because this is something that fans are kind of on edge with the 2015 ending, the vintage roadmap or whatnot. What is your guys' overall feel and outlook to the future for Masters of the Universe beyond 2015? Right I feel now? good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, you know, I, I I know there is, uh, you know, I've heard the term so many times just in Toy Fair, the doom and gloom yeah. Uh, yeah. attitude. Um, there's, there's no reason for it. Uh, okay. I, there's... Yeah, things things may be, may be dip, a little different, um, but I think the the you know obviously we can't say too much, but I can right, say right. The, the the decisions that are being made with the line are so spot on. Uh, it just it's it just it feels right, and there's and I will say there's just there's no reason to 
to get you know down about it there's there's a lot of stuff out there that's left to do that's really exciting um I mean, for me, it's so almost liberating. I mean, we can't, like he said, we can't be specific. Right. If plans go through as as we're hoping they do, there's a lot of surprises. People are going, like we've said before, people are going to say, wow, I never thought I would see this happen. And they're going to be so excited if they're uh, Masters yeah. fans. Yeah. Being Masters fans ourselves, we're always very critical um, of the choices that are made of what's going to be produced. Not that they're right or wrong, but, you know, our own personal choices. And we know that, that we at least have some idea of what the fans are looking for out there and we think the things that are lined up coming up for the very near future we think fans are going to go crazy over. yeah I mean one, really one thing to, to you, you know kind of point out is that with uh, the, I think we I think we were talking about it yesterday with with uh, 15 no 14 and 15 mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, we, we work a year ahead on yeah. this stuff so it really is sometimes I don't know what's going on as far as like when things are coming out. Yeah. But, uh, for fourteen and fifteen, it really, it's just you know, it's kind of been a process of just you know what two years checking of figures boxes, are going to be. You're yeah. just checking the boxes, and uh, you know there was a certain promise that was made to the fan base, and there were obligations that needed to be met. And with 2016, they they are they are going to be met, uh, yeah. which which I mean that's something to celebrate on its own. I mean that's yeah. fantastic. Um, but for uh, 16, though, there's, you know, that's almost, that's just kind of been lifted. And so th- it, there's room to make exciting decisions and, and really get that, that anticipation back well, up. It, it, it kind of reminds me of what it was like getting toys in the 80s because with 16, the vintage line is going to be done, at least the unique characters and uh, Vin- vintage figures. Right, vintage yeah. figures, yes. Sorry. Not vintage toys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that's exactly right. But, um, you know, I have re- checking those boxes the past couple of years, but now in 2016, it kind of just blows the doors wide open to things that we've never gotten before. So, right. not realizing that this is a possibility is kind of like when you're a kid and you're finding a toy in the store for the first time yeah. and you never knew it existed. It's, it's, this, this is kind of the same Yeah, way. it's like for the first time in a couple of years, the oh, collectors okay, of this line don't know what they're going to get. And so that, that excitement, that anticipation, as you say, um, is back, sort of. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. that's what I mean. I, 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 I guess the first time some of that will be uh, shown off will be at San Diego this year. Uh, I, you know, I don't, I don't know how they, you know, how they plan it, if they're going to do the panel or, or what right. yet. It's still a little early for that, but yeah. I think, um, I, I, you know, I think San Diego is, is, I think it's going to be a surprise. Yeah. How many surprises there there are, <laughs> and, and it, you know the the coolness that's going to going to be put on display in San Diego this yeah. year. Well, you know, the the fans really look to you guys um, and trust you guys, especially with your opinions and your feelings about uh, the line overall. So it, it's good to hear you guys speak in this um, kind of way, because things can kind of get tangential and people can fly off the handle, which is human nature, not knowing what the future holds. But even without talking specifically, this is, I think, a good message for people to have that the exciting times are still to come, you know. Yeah. So. I mean, it, it's you know, and it's just uh, you know, it's, it's it's so reassuring to know that Mattel is standing behind the brand yeah. the way that they are, um, because you know the the fans have, have kept this line going for years now. I mean, this this line has had a great run. Yeah. I mean, it's by conventional. Uh, you know, standards within the industry, this line should have been happen. done years ago. <laughs> yeah. um, and it, it, you know, they, they're sticking with it, and they're really, uh, you know, some of the decisions that, that we've seen that they're making um, just really speak to that. I mean, because yeah. there's, there's. Lend themselves to longevity. And yeah, like it, that. I mean, because it could just go on cruise control at yeah. this point, and they, and they could maybe get away with it. But it's it's not on cruise control. It's uh, like They're I said, I some really cool unconventional decisions. Cool, Fans and just, just going to be really excited. Very smart. Cool. Yeah. 
Good. Well, we will look forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of characters left undone, Filmation 2000X, things like that. So I'm really excited for all of it. So, th- so thanks, are we. thanks for the peace of mind on that for everybody. I think that's <laughs> Thank you guys for spending so much of your yeah, uh, Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Um, best of luck um, on the remainder of the Kickstarter. Hopefully the time uh, for being able to breathe easy is going to happen sooner than, than later. But anything that you guys have to get out there, send it to us. We'll get it up there, get the word out. And, Back, back this uh, myth of legions because Please. it's going to be awesome. <laughs> thank it's you very much. Awesome. We we appreciate everything that you do for us. Hey, you guys are awesome. We love it. That's why. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank thank you. Thanks.